Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second part of the robotic lemonade game. Last time, what we made is that we made. I'm just gonna play it right now. A game where you have this tree with all these lemons on it, lemons on the tree, and then you click each lemon to uh, yes, collect it. And today we're gonna continue our little game and make it more polished. So I've set three goals for today. First is that we're gonna learn how to code to grow your own lemon, meaning that lemons gonna start appearing from nothing to like a big lemon and eventually maybe too big to like and then it falls so the whole challenge is for you to get the lemon when it's perfect and um, don't let it fall so yeah and the our second part our second part of today's class is gonna be the scoring system where we're gonna have let's say a ui element under the game that's saying oh your current score is 10 out of 100 and the third part is that we're going to export our game to web so yes let's get started when you think about growing our lemon remember how we did our coding last time right we have a script on each lemon called the lemon script and if i double click the script so when I have my script open, there's jar, am I being clicked? We have an amount of as button function that basically detects the clicking of the lemon. And um, here, if it's being clicked, then we lerp the position from the lemon's position to the jar's position. So now what we want to do is that when the game starts, the lemon size should be set to zero. And throughout the time the lemon size will just increase 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 until it get to a point where the lemon size is ideal and then we drop the lemon right so more complicated than what we had last time but this will help you understand better um, how video game and how coding works so um i'm gonna start by let's say right here on line 24 we have transform that position equals to something something. So transform, and I think I mentioned this last time too, is a property on all the game objects in Unity that has position, rotation, and scale. And this time, what we want to change is the scale element of the transform. So what we want to do in start is that we're gonna write transform dot scale. Well, when you type scale, it asks local scale or lossy scale, global scale. Um, I almost always use local scale. I don't remember when it was. I don't think I ever used lossy scale. So, so transform dot local scale equals to. And remember, scale same as position and rotation is a vector three. Vector three means that it's a vector with three elements. So let's say scale, rotation, position, they have an X and Y and Z because a 3D, it's a 3D space. Even though our element looks like it's 2D, but we're still running it in the 3D engine, so we need to follow the rules. And um, over here, I can write new vector 3, 0, 0, 0. But there's a better way to write this, a less newbier way, it's vector 3, dot 0. It's just the default value, okay? And um, yeah, that's about it. And what we want to add, right? I mean, if you want to run the game right now and see what happens, you see that all the lemon disappears. But they're not because they're still here, but their scale is zero. So technically not disappeared. And what we want to do next is that we want we want to make the lemon grow big, right? So what I'm gonna do is that over here, I'm gonna write transform dot local scale plus equals to, meaning that each frame we add a little bit number to this vector three, just a little bit. Every frame we add a little bit, every frame a little bit, and computer runs over and over, which means this this update function. Is gonna get run over and over and over again and then every time 
what added is gonna make our lemon just grow like this, right? So new vector three, uh, since we're adding to a vector three, so what we're adding to must be a vector three, we need to let it know that we wanna add, what's the number that we wanna add to x, y, and z. So I'm gonna just write, at 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And um, you know what will happen if I just leave this line as this and then not do anything about it? I can run it to find out. See, all the lemons, <laughs> it was really laggy because um, I'm also recording, but all the lemons will just start growing until they hit infinity, right? Let's run it one more time, it's pretty, Boom, still growing, still growing, and then it will just take over the entire world. So we don't want that. I mean, sometimes we do want that, but this time specifically, we don't want that. So what we want is that we're gonna add a condition to this line. And another thing that you need to be careful of is that if I type just 0 0.1 oops, here, um, it's not gonna run so well on all the computers because Unity have this thing called time delta time. So what we want is that I'm gonna write time delta time multiplies by the new vector. So uh, a good thing to learn about time delta time is that whenever you're adding or reducing like an amount of numbers, you should always, always, always have delta time delta time because um, what it does is that it equalizes all the computer speeds. So like I said, update runs every frame and then some computers have a more powerful, more powerful processor and some computers are like, I would say weaker. And then that's why if I write 0.1, to um, every and export it to every computer and the faster computers will just increase super fast and the slower computers are going to increase like frame by frame frame by frame so um time delta time is this thing that unity created to basically equalize everything so that um, the speed that is running in our editor it's going to be the same speed that we run it on our phone on the website on other computers so yeah, every time you pl you write plus equals to or a minus equals to or multiply equals to, you always should put time delta time here. So that we want to add an if statement, meaning that if our transform local scale is bigger than a certain number, then we don't continue this argument. And then if we reverse that is that if transform.local scale is smaller than certain number, which means un only under this condition will we keep running this command. So technically this is what we want to do, but remember local scale is a vector three and comparing the vector three, it's um, really messy. So what we want to do is that we want to compare one value since our local scale is increasing at the same amount of value. I'm just gonna compare the x of the local scale and make it uh, smaller than this number. And what number should this be? Let's go back to our game. So this is our number. It's 0 0.05, which means that if, oops, uh, not zero. Okay. 0.05 which means that if our lemon is at 0.05 right now we'll be happy right so what we want is that over here this number we write 0.05 we save and we see what happens oh they all increase in size and it's very very fast because I put time delta time so we want to maybe over here but instead of 0 0.1, we'll put 0 
And a better way to do this, a more programmer way to do this, is that we'll create a variable, float lemon in increase speed equals to 0 0.01. This doesn't need to be public. It can just be float. And over here, these three numbers, we can just replace them with lemon increase speed, lemon increase speed, lemon increase speed. So in the future, if I change the lemon increase speed over here to let's say three or 0 0.0001, all these would just automatically get changed. So I, so I don't need to go over here and change every one which wastes I mean, not a lot of time, but a little bit of time. Okay, so change that. Let's see it again. And ta-da, we have our lemon growing. But you notice what's the kind of problem, right? All of the lemons are growing at the same speed, which kind of defeats the purpose of this mm, growing mechanism, which is inherently make, trying to make this game harder, right? What we want to add right here is that we want all the lemons to grow at different times. So that when you first start a game, you see this lemon growing, then you see this lemon growing, then you see this lemon growing, and then in the end, you just need to click whichever lemon that's like at the right size, right? Like guacamole. Guacamole, guacamole. So right now, you see, when update starts running, all the transform local scale is start. It's gonna start to all of this command on all the lemons at, with the lemon script attached is gonna start running, right? No question asked. And what we wanna do right now is that we wanna add a little bit of randomness to it. So we're gonna have a number, and the number is the amount of time the lemon wait until it starts running, right? So with the, with, the, with the help of this number, we're going to be able to randomize how each lemon would run itself, right? So I'm going to create a variable because it's a random number. I'm going to write it down in the variable. Um, float the um, grow delay because this number is going to be the amount of delay you have before it starts growing. So I'm calling it grow delay. It's very, very important to call your variables a very specific name. So in the future, let's say 10 years later, you want to go back to this project and you read, am I being clicked, let my increase speed, grow delay. You're like, oh, I guess I know what they are. But if your name is something like boo or like poo, when you come back 10 years later to this project, you're just like, what the hell am I writing? It will give you such a hard time. So yeah, please don't do that. Always name your variables very, very clearly exactly what they're supposed to do just to help yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna set this flow, grow, grow, I'm gonna set this grow delay to be one F, meaning it's one second. But over here in start, I'm gonna randomize it a little bit by typing grow delay equals to random dot range. So random dot range is a function for a, to randomize a float. You give it a range and it's gonna run, give you a random, random number between it. So what I want is probably, I want a number between zero and um, three, right? zero and three so from no delay to a three second delay and this number we can change later on so even though we set grow delay to one right now which we don't even need to do grow delay on start is going to be set to a random number and on update what we need to do right he, right here is that uh, if only the time uh, of this lemon instantiated is bigger than grow delay then we run this whole if statement. So we're going to have an if statement on top of the if statement, right? So if I didn't remember, if I remember it correctly. Yes, if time, okay. Time.time .time means that how many times have passed since the beginning of the game. 
um, basically it's a number that keeps changing and it's documenting basically how long has it been since the game started so we want that number and we want to say if that number is bigger than your grow delay and time dot time is probably from the moment the game starts it's gonna start increasing in one second two second three second if my grow delay is zero time dot time is always gonna be bigger than grow delay it means that our lemon is gonna start growing right away so I'm gonna put my if statement in my if statement and make sure the brackets are correct so if you have like some situation like this like like this or like this it's very very confusing be, be, be really really careful of your brackets make sure that each open bracket have its sibling close bracket its lover close brackets whatever you call it but each open brackets need to have a close bracket okay just check your brackets and um okay going back to grow delay so if grow delay is set to three then this lemon would only start increasing its scale when time dot time is bigger than three so when after three seconds of the game has started so when a game runs all the different lemon script attached to my different lemons is gonna have a different number of the grow delay which is the beauty of it which is exactly what we want see they start increasing at different times and um yeah they increase differently i think my lemons are still increasing pretty slowly so i'm gonna put 0 0.03 or you know what even better we can apply our, what do we learn from random to our lemon increase speed so over here i can type lemon increase speed equals to random dot range 0.02 f and 0 0.04 So technically, we don't need here either. Oops. And um, what we're gonna have here is that we're gonna have the lemon increasing at different speed. So, okay. And here, yay. But now you know what? Because we haven't finished with our collecting mechanism, now it doesn't matter how big your lemon is you can always collect it right because we haven't told the jar when to not collect it and um before i get into that i want to just duplicate more lemons because um we have a lot more space and it's gonna look a lot more fun if you're not satisfied with how i arrange the lemon you can feel free to arrange it freely my lemon scale right here is 0 0.05 yours might not be so be my guest and change them customize it okay now my tree is laid with those so many lemons it's gonna make us very rich okay there's one lemon here that's out of the edge so let's bring it back okay before i run again i'm gonna add another basically if statement for collecting so since our collecting action is written under our mouse up as button means that the collecting action is only happening when you click right and when you click this function runs because this is the default our mouse up as button function and over here am i being clicked is turned to true and if am i being clicked is turned to true this whole line is basically saying that collect lemon so this line is very very important and basically everything like next step we're gonna add scores and stuff everything that's related to a lemon being c collected is basically here and here and the difference between these two places is that here a mouse of us button only gets run once and here under if am i being clicked is true gets run infinitely after a mouse of us button is run meaning that so if we want a function to be only run once we should write it here and if we want to document something along the time of an update we write it here okay so what did i want again so yeah what i want right now is that i want the lemon to only be collected after it's done growing okay 
So how do we tell if a lemon is done growing? It's very easy. We check if the lemon scale is the same as our final scale, right? Which is 0 0.05. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna make the 0 0.05 into a variable and we're gonna write over here float lemon biggest scale or lemon final scale better and over under here or up here I mean your choice we have to tell it that the scale is 0 0.05 okay and so what we want to do is that if basically local scale is equals to final scale then allow this to happen right allow the click to happen because if it's not equals to the local scale meaning that if it's tiny you can still click it and collect it and that's not what we want so over here ideally we can write another if statement transform the local scale the x equals to lemon final scale and we run whatever we want to run later right but every time unity adds a little bit of fun how to say number to our existing number there's like a slight imperfection to it so let's say right here we want the local scale to finally be the final scale which is 0 0.05 but it's never actually 0 0.05. It's always something like 0 0.052314. It has like a bunch of string that's under it. So the safer way to do this, instead of double zero, double equals to, we, we say bigger equals to, right? So basically what this is saying is everything that this is not saying. So basically everything under this if statement, right? So it's the opposite of this if statement. So technically we can write it just as an else statement. It means that if this happens, then do this. Then if this doesn't happen anymore, everything run this part. Basically that's how basic if and else statement works. So technically we can write like a Boolean here. If this is smaller than final scale, do this, you increase the scale. Else, if it's not, change the boolean to true, which allows this to happen. So um, let's create the boolean first, right? Oh, I already have it created. Cheated. The boolean is called is lemon ready, and um, so basically it means what it says is lemon ready, right? So in the else statement, I'm gonna call it is lemon ready, and I'm gonna make it true. And over here, what I'm gonna do is that if is lemon ready and I'm gonna copy paste am I being clicked under is lemon ready so that if only lemon is ready you're being clicked and if lemon is not ready you're technically not allowed to be clicked right so but there is a problem with this if statement so if transform local scale dot x is smaller than the final scale we increase else it's true but if we only allow the scale to increase when it's smaller than the final scale technically the scale will never be bigger or equals to the final scale right so what I would recommend here um, instead of smaller I'm gonna write equals to and um, over here, instead of in else, I'm going to write another if statement. If transform.localScale.x uh, equals to lemon final scale. But again, equals to what have that imprecision problem. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, instead of equals, I'm going to write bigger or equals to, meaning that it's either bigger or equal. So from the lemon final scale point to like any number that's bigger in it. I'm gonna make the lemon sc final scale minus 0 0.001, something like that. So add a little bit of imperfection to it, meaning that when the lemon is at this stage, it's gonna be ready. Okay, it's lemon ready equals to true. 
when is lemon ready? Am I being quick? It's true. And then if only this is allowed, transform position plus plus. Okay. Sometimes if you're not sure if this code is gonna work, it's always good to write debug log here. Lemon ready. So every time if you click, two debug should log. One is the am I being clicked? And this debug always log. Doesn't matter how many times you click the lemon. But this debug only log if the lemon is ready, meaning that the lemon is big enough. So if you click some lemon that's smaller enough, nothing should happen. You, the lemon ready should not be run, right? And the lemon should not be collected. But if you only click something when it's big enough, this will run. So in order for us to observe this better, I'm going to change the lemon increase speed to like really, really, really slow between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02, just to, just so we can observe it better. Okay. So first I play and I click, you see, it says, am I being clicked? But that now, oh, they're always, they're all ready. And then I click and then it goes, right? So that's basically what we wanted. When the lemon isn't ready, you click it, nothing happens. And when the lemon is ready, you click it and it goes. And what's the last thing that we're going to do is that we're going to make the lemon just drop out of the screen if it just doesn't be clicked after it's grown for like, I would say, a second or two. So a second or two after the lemon's fully grown, if you don't click it, by the time, it's just going to drop. So in order to make lemon drop, well, I mean, when it's dropping, only one number of all the position numbers changing, right? Let's say if you see, if you can see from the inspector here, when I'm moving this one lemon, only the Y is changing. So what we want is that we want to give all the lemon a decrease in Y and then just make it decrease. Okay. So very easy. After it's ripe, meaning that transform the local scale here is lemon ready is true which means that here's the when lemon is good right so so what we want is that we want to write an if statement so when we want the lemon to drop um yeah we can technically just write it here when lemon is finished growing because this function this part of the whole function is going to just keep running because this statement is always going to be true because nothing's going to put our lemon scale to be smaller than its final scale because it's just not going to happen right if we want the lemon to drop we should write it over here you can also do something like if is lemon ready then write something here that's like a more clearer way to organize your thought, meaning that in the future, if you ever see this if statement, you can instantly just remember, oh, this is this is when lemon starts to drop because this lemon uh, is ready and stuff. But um, to make everything just simpler, I would say, I can write it here. But it's basically the same thing. Different programmers have different ways to, you know, organize their code. I'm just going to write it here is lemon ready equals to true. And then I don't want the lemon to start dropping right away because that you wouldn't even have a chance to click, right? I want the lemon to have a nice delay and then only after the second or two, you're gonna start dropping. Start dropping. So I'm gonna write, how should I call this? Much lemon ready allowance this is a weird name you can call it something else lemon ready time or lemon ready meaning that lemon ready allowance means that um how many seconds am, is the lemon allowed to be ready before it starts dropping so i'm gonna write one second and this i do not recommend randomize it because it will confuse the player because if everything's randomized then you kind of just like when is this lemon gonna drop? Is it gonna be a split second? Is it gonna be two seconds? Then it's just too much confusion. For, for now, we're gonna make the lemon ready allowance the same number, one second. You can make it two seconds, or we can 
we can make it one second, then we play it, then we see how we feel, then we come back and change it. And basically, game design is all about like, uh, you set a default value, then you play it and see how you feel. Is it too hard? Is it too easy? Then you come back, and then you change a bunch of values, and then you can keep going. Okay. So lemon ready allowance is one. So over here, this is when we use something called a timer. So we want a timer to start its time only when this if statement is true. So we need to create a customized timer and the timer is also a float. We're going to call it lemon ready timer. And this timer is going to be zero. So if this if statement is right, our lemon ready timer is going to plus equals to time data time means that it's going to start documenting the time. And if lemon ready timer is bigger or equals to one means that, well, I type one here, but what I should do is that I should type lemon ready allowance, which is one, but, um, I type it up here so in the future if you want to change the value you can change it up here instead of trying to find it down here so yeah if lemon ready timer is bigger or equals to lemon ready allowance means that so after the lemon is ready we start the timer basically documenting how many time has how long has it been since our lemon is ready and then the computer is asking this question every frame and at one frame our lemon ready timer is going to tell the computer, oh, it's been one second since our lemon's ready. And the computer is like, huh, one second is one second bigger equal to lemon ready allowance, which is also one second. And if it is, then over here, we're going to write lemon fall. It's all cap because it, lemon's excited to be falling. <laughs> okay. And how do we make the lemon fall? We change the position and only the position of, um, do you call it the y value and we just make it decrease right let's make sure if it's actually decreasing so yeah when i when i lower this lemon the y is decreasing so what we want to do is that transform dot position plus equals to new vector three because everything's a vector three and you don't want the x and the z axis to have any changes so you type zero and um, on the x axis and on the y axis you take it you can type negative um, point two point three this is how you how fast you want the lemon to fall well this can technically be a variable up there too but um for now i'm just not gonna do it zero okay and yeah so if lemon ready timer is bigger than lemon ready allowance, lemon fall, and this happens. Let's see. So if I don't touch any, ah, they're gonna start falling, and they're falling so slow. <laughs> oh, lemon ready. Oh, oh, and yep, that's a bug because we haven't told our lemon click screen. Well, first, let's fix the falling speed because it's ridiculous. Let's change it to one, maybe two. Yeah, who cares? But um, you notice that even when the lemon's falling, we can still click it, right? Because when the lemon's falling, this nothing's changed to the statement. So what we can do is that we can add another Boolean here and then put another Boolean here, or we can imp just use our existing boolean called is lemon ready so over here is lemon ready is true but then if this happened right over here when lemon starts falling is lemon ready is false but you know there's another logical fallacy here which is pretty confusing but i'll try my best to explain it well technically it should work right if lemon timer is bigger than lemon allowance meaning that um, one second after lemon is finished growing and then we let it fall here but then the computer is gonna keep looping the update and when it gets to here it's gonna set lemon ready to true again and then when this happened lemon ready to false and then when it loops again 
it's gonna set the lemon ready to true, and then when over here it's gonna set it to false, and then the lemon ready boolean is just gonna get so confused, setting to true and false, true and false, true and false every frame, and then that's why this will not work. And how do we avoid that? By putting our boolean in separate parts of the if statement, because if there's an if statement. You should always do that to a boolean. I mean, and a boolean is really, really confusing to think about when it comes to programming, and it takes a lot of practice for you to really start to think about booleans the way computers do. And it's okay if you don't understand it right away, but the more you do it, the more you will get it. It's all about practice. So over here, I have this if statement saying if lemma ready timer is bigger than lemma ready allowance, and what I can write is here I can write else. So technically, else statement means that over here, if lemon ready timer is smaller than lemon ready allowance, right? I'm gonna comment it out. So this is what this else means essentially. It means that if lemon ready timer is smaller than lemon ready allowance, and when this happens, we tell is lemon ready to be true, right? So at first, let's try to simulate computer, right? We're gonna run from this line, and this line it's asking is the lemon bigger is the lemon is the time bigger than the grow delay we have? So if our grow delay is like three seconds, means that our lemon's only gonna start growing after three seconds. And if it's true, then we go through here. If the statement is true, then we ask again. If the lemon scale is smaller than the final scale, and the computer is like, of course, because you haven't started growing yet. Of course, it's gonna be smaller than the final scale, and this is gonna run. And then over here, we ask if the lemon local scale is bigger or equals to lemon final scale minus this number, which is essentially is saying that has lemon finished growing. And under this if statement, we're gonna do basically if. This happens, meaning that lemon is finished growing. This happens, and else means that if lemon hasn't finished growing, then this happens. If the lemon ready timer is bigger to one, means that it's only been a second after the lemon has finished growing. Then, is lemon ready is equals to false, meaning that after a second after the lemon's finished growing. You cannot click the lemon anymore. So over here in this else statement, which basically means in between when lemon's ready to the second after lemon's ready, this time period only in this time period are you allowed to click the lemon. Okay. Let's try. So I click. I click. But um, if it starts falling, then I can't really click it. And yeah, I click, I click. Ta-da! Ah, that last lemon, I didn't get it. But um, yeah. And the funny thing, if you want to see, is that even though the game's finished, your lemon's still gonna fall because it didn't put an end to the if statement, and it's just gonna keep falling and falling and falling and falling. And if we leave this to run for a week, it's gonna fall, fall for like, I don't know. This is um above the curriculum, but I think it's really helpful to know. So one way to do that is that when the lemon falls, let's say to here, right, out of the screen, you delete it. And how do you ca how can you tell if the lemon has been out of the screen? Well, you tell it by its y value, right? So what's the y value here? If I drag the lemon here, the y is negative five. So I'm gonna call it like negative six, okay? So under update, don't have to worry about any of the if statement. We're gonna write our new if if transform dot position dot y is smaller or equals to negative five f. We're basically gonna destroy the lemon. Destroy game object. That's the command for destroy lemon. And game object means that the game object that lemon script is the hatch to, which is the lemon itself. So yeah, let's see. Let's run it again and see if it happens. It's actually a lot easier than I thought. So I collect, I collect, I collect. Oh no, they're falling! No, 
but you see when they fall here they destroy themselves which is really good for a computer because if you have a game right here running you don't want things to keep falling under your screen without you even realize it computer still trying to calculate it how long it's falling how long has it been and it's just gonna create like unnecessary calculations for a computer to do which is really like you know not necessary so let's talk about scoring so there's a lot of ways you can do scoring right you can make every lemon to be a hundred and then basically the more lemon you get the more hundreds you get or you can make the whole mm, uh, if you if you get every lemon right then it's a hundred then you can make it into like percentage wise i'm just gonna do it the easy way and then make the lemon into a hundred point you can do it in whatever you, you want you can make it like 36 or some obscure number or try to make it look fancier <laughs> but it's your choice so first of all we're gonna want to see our score so the way to do that in unity is that we're gonna create a UI element we're gonna go over here in the, our hierarchy before everything I'm just gonna clean around my uh, scene because it looks kind of messy I'm gonna drag it background so how you arrange your hierarchy that wouldn't really affect this and on my lemons here I, I can technically put them under a parent so I'm gonna create a parent create empty I'm gonna call it lemons and remember your parent position rotation scale should be should look like this basically it's a good practice in unity to have your parent to be like set to default basically let's say if i click here and click reset this is the value that i want the parent to be click all my lemons put it in my lemons parent and then i can just close this <sighs> looks so much better keep your keep your project very clean it's very important and just in case i want to run it again to make sure if everything's still good yeah everything's still good lemon's still falling oh my god this game is hard okay okay i'm gonna first change this time range from zero to seven i'm gonna change it from zero to like 20 so that i have more chance to be ready okay and now what we're gonna create is that we're gonna create a ui element so you can click create ui text yeah we want a text and then when you create the text you will see an event system and a canvas is automatically created Canvas is basically the parent for all the UI element. If you have a UI element outside of a canvas, it wouldn't work. And Unity Canvas is like this thing. It's way bigger than your actual project. It's just the way Unity organizes it. You don't have to worry why is it like that, but you just need to know how to use it, right? So if I click on my text, and I don't know where my text is in my scene, click on your text, double click it, yeah, that's a better way. Double click it and then you can find new text. And you you will realize that your text is under your canvas, which is represented by this white square. And then if you want to actually be, be able to see your text, you should drag it into your scene. And then on my game view, you see this new text. And the new text is tiny, so I'm going to make it bigger. And... Um, yeah, just put it here and the new text is really pixelated because the font size so it's really weird in unity you got to change the font size in order to make it less pixelated here you can change the position x and y of your ui element if you drag it around you see how the x and y's are changing and width and height i'm gonna change it to 300 oh actually 300 is not enough 100 height 100 so it's a box uh 200 actually 50 okay and then we drag it right here and then the text i'm gonna change the font size to 50 uh that's too big you can't see it 40 30 actually 40 is good i'm just gonna change my height to 100 width to 200 font unity only have a default area font but this file you can download from like anywhere on the internet and choose your own font which is actually really cool so i'm gonna spend some time talking about it 
So if you go to 1001 font, basically you can get free fonts, baby. And you can get all sorts of cool fonts. And then I'm going to show you how to implement the font into Unity. I know this is extra, but this is really cool. So let's say I'm not going to spend time looking for my font, but you can feel free to spend hours looking for your best font. If you find, let's say, Saboga Regular, and I click download, it downloads as a zip file. You open it, you find the TTF file, which is the font file, and then you drag it, open your project, and then you drag the font into your project. And we have this Sabuga Regular. And then click our text over here with this font. Just drag your Sabuga Regular into it. And ta da! We have a different type of font which is really exciting because, you know, basic font is just lame. So have fun with some font and um, adjust it better so you can see it. And basically this, we're going to say score is XXX and you can see the XXX because I need to make it wider and make it smaller. Okay. Okay. So what we can do is that we can do two text elements. First, we call it score. Or you can press enter and change the name. Second, we call it actual uh, score number. So the first score, we can just type over here the text. Score is. And the, sec the second one, we just type a number, right? Well, my font. Unluckily, the font that I downloaded doesn't have a number in this font, which is super weird. Why would it not have a number in your font? But um, anyway, it's my bad. Uh, I'm going to get myself some other font. I have a bunch of fonts. If you're on your Mac, um, I don't know how PC works, but I know Mac, you have this font book. Here. Okay. And over here. I'm gonna okay so over here score is score number is 100 and I'm gonna move it to here the score is you can have the score is or score like this well change you can change the color you can change the style have fun with it but right now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it to this because I already spent too much time on this. Okay. Okay. So we have the score, but right now the score is not gonna change because it's just a text element, right? Why would it wanna change? It's not intelligent. It's not like it has its own mind. It's just a machine. It you tell it what to do, right? So what we wanna do is that in our code, we want the score to change. For this, we're gonna write another script and we can attach the script to the score. Or you know what, we're just going to attach the script to the score. And when we click our score number, which is the number, you be careful, click on the one that's actually the number, not the one that says score, right? And then we add component and um, score manage. So it's a good practice to call your script managers because they they are. And um, yeah, I added score manager and that double click it and I'm welcomed with a new empty screen. So score manager over here is where we're going to calculate all the scores. Basically, in my lemon script, every time a lemon's being clicked, I'm going to tell score manager, hey, there's a lemon being clicked. Give me 100 scores. So there's two steps in this. First, we need to get the score. And second, we need to put our number from here in the script to this number right here so that you can see, right? It's actually two very different concepts. The variables here that we're going to create, we're going to create a float. We're going to make it public. Uh, my score. We can change the number of this float. can make it 100, 200, 300 based on how many lemons that are co collected. But there's also a step that we need to put, attach this number into the number here, into the score number here which is attached with my screen, okay? So let's do the boring part first, because um, that's how I like to do things. <laughs> so 
because what we're changing is a UI element and the Unity UI element, you have to do this thing. You have to tell Unity that you're using Unity Engine.UI. And if you don't do that, it wouldn't like some of the commands wouldn't work. And we're going to create over here, update. Yeah, an update. What we're going to do is that we're going to get the text. And the way we're getting text is that if we click on the score number game object, even if it's a UI element, it's still a game object. And on our game object, we find rect transform, canvas render, text, and score manager. These four elements. What we want is that we want to get the text element and get the text element inside the text element, right? So we want to get this thing, and then we want to be able to change this. And then when we change this, you see UI gets changed, right? So easy stuff. What we're going to do is that we're going to create a variable called text. In my score text right and then basically we can get it with code but we can also just drag it so I created that I loaded it let's just drag it it's easier and over here my score text you see it says non text drag yourself into it and boom the score number text meaning that this chunk is automatically plugged into my score text. And all we gotta do here in update is that my score text dot text. So if you click dot here, you can see font size, font style, game object, font. You can change font with code, you can change the size with code, you can change basically all the elements here. Font size, line spacing, rich text, paragraph, alignment, you can change them by code. But we're not going into that. And also the color you can change by code. We're not going into that right now because all we want is to change the text. And we're going to click my score dot text dot text equals to what? My score right here. My score. And it's going to give you a red arrow because it says cannot implicitly convert type float to string because my score is technically a float. And we're going to use the float because float is a number that can be added, but string is a text that can be read. So all of the canvas element, they are all strings, right? But string can be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's just a demonstration of the content. So here we need to do this conversion. Basically, we need to convert our mathematical number, which is a float, into a string that can be read by text. So over here, all you need to do is that you need to type dot to string and then a parentheses because that's the syntax. And next step, which is the final step, is that we're going to connect. We're going to add a hundred score to us every time we have a lemon. And because we're going to get to a thousand maybe or not. So I want to give it more spacing here. Click this, drag it here, and make it maybe smaller. So under lemon script, we are going to basically here every time we're going to get the value from a score manager and um, basically change it here. So there are, there are like, I would say very, three, four different ways of, from, um, of how do you say it? one script fetching the value of another script into its own value so that like, even though our my score value is in the score manager script, there's ways for our lemon script to get this value and make changes to it. And I know it's um, a little bit confusing, but let's say if I declare this variable here, my score, and I type just my score here, it wouldn't recognize it because it doesn't know which my score. It doesn't, all the value here in lemon script is only the local lemon script value. So you we really want, we want to change the score manager value in our lemon scripts. And the, I would say the easiest way to do that is to make our float static. So the moment you make your float static, any static number can be accessed throughout the entire script by calling the script name and the variable name. So right now, if I go to lemon script and I call score manager dot my score, and then I can just add equals to 100 okay 
So easy as that. And I don't want this to not be in this if statement because it's, it, this if statement is the only place that our score is allowed to add because if it's outside of this, then you can just add a score anytime you want, right? It does, the lemma doesn't need to be ready. You can add it when it's falling in. That's not right. So over here, only if lemma is ready, my score equals to uh, plus equals to 100. And over here, yeah. So that's all we needed to do. And okay, so I did that and let's see if it works. I press play and I fetch 100, oops, 200, ah, ah, no, ah, I suck. And 500, yes. And that's it, ah, oh my God. I need a mouse for this. Oh my God, uh, you know what? You don't need to be good at playing games in order to make game. That's the best part about it. You don't... 1400! Woo! So we're gonna get to the final, final goal of today, which is to export our game. And if your Unity is, st is installed in the right way, if you go to File, Build Settings, you are supposed to have the WebGL build. So you can click on WebGL because we're building this web and click here, switch platform, and give it a second. Once it's done, you just click build and run, and it's gonna ask you where to save your build. So don't, do not change this, how do I say, directory, just save it in the same, you make laminated folder so that you don't get confused. And I already tried to build it before, because I cheated, so, you can call it build slash web slash zero one because in the future you can have zero two zero three. You can call it my first build or my lemon game. Lemon game. Okay, save. And then when you click save, it's just just gonna start building. And do not click anything when it's building because you just don't want to disturb it. Let the, let the computer do its thing. Looks like it's ready made with unity da, 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 da. and yep oh one more thing that i forgot to mention if you want to change the export size proportion of your window go to here player settings and resolution and presentation resolution default canvas width and height you can change that maybe to 1920 and, and 1080 and yeah, but I'm gonna keep mine to be a thousand by a thousand because this I also set to be a thousand by a thousand. Okay, so I think that's it for our lemonade game. If in the future I guess more people are interested, we can keep working on this game, making it look better, polish it, export it to different platforms. But for now, I think it's definitely a lot. You guys have already done multi-scripting, static variables. So don't be scared if you don't understand it. It's totally normal and I would say the only way to understand it better if, is that you keep keep practicing and eventually your brain was just like oh yeah I get it now but if you want to continue working on this game even on your own there is plenty of tutorials that you can watch online if you want to know like how to destroy an object how to move an object just google how do I destroy an object being unity and the right answer will just come if you do enough research. Destroy an object in Unity. I'm just gonna try it. Destroy Unity official tutorials. You can watch that, or you can go to Unity scripting API object destroy. Over here, they have so many examples telling you how to destroy an object. If you want, you can take your own time and then polish this game. Maybe make the lemon have different scales. Maybe make the lemon, you know, animate a little bit. Maybe give the le lemon a nice, I would say, outline when they're ready. So there's more of a visual hint. But there's a lot of things that you can do. And so, yeah, thank you for watching and have a great one. We can just start playing right away. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, man, I get anxious. Oh, man, this is hard. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, the last one, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Okay. 1200. Oh, one more. Ah, uh, got it.